Maybe it had been seconds. Or maybe it had been years. Task Force 69 was in disarray. Separated. They didn't know who they were, where they were, but they knew they must kill. They were in a hell populated by Ron Jeremy's. Their weapon barrels sagged from the heat of thousands of rounds. Ron Jeremy never truly died, and if the rounds landed true, who was the real enemy? Eons of time stretched on with Task Force 69 caught in the temporal loom, perhaps in eternity. Their fate unknown, they fired on whatever choice did they have. had your red dot battery die go ahead and hit that subscribe button guys like and comment the comment section is completely tame so get in there and make it a little bit more crazy guys if you're looking to support the channel the biggest support of the channel right now is brown owls brown owls are huge 2a advocates as well as having an awesome website with all the 2a stuff that you could possibly want get in there check them out big thank you to them this particular video is sponsored by keeps <laughs> so keeps we are now legitimate we have actual sponsors we'll talk more about them later ladies and gentlemen my often forgotten but most certainly not by me m68 co close combat optics welcome to the channel today we're going to be talking about a fairly cool optic and that is going to be the primary arms micro prism now before we talk about that we're going to do what I always do. And we're going to do our full disclosure. So what is my relationship with primary arms? Um, so obviously I've done videos for them before. They typically provided ammo for those videos. Um, on this particular video, um, ammunition's a little short from a lot of guys. So this um, video has ammunition sponsored by Global Ordnance. A big thank you to them. Um, and that is it when it comes to this. So understand I've done reviews for them in the past. Nonetheless, I try to be as neutral and unbiased as possible when I go after these reviews. So with those things out of the way, let's go and let's talk about it. So first off, before we kind of get into the optic, the big question is often, what precisely is a prism optic? So the easiest way to explain it um, would be imagine a scope, right? Like a rifle scope or a low power variable optic and have that just at a fixed one power. So essentially when you look through it, you're essentially seeing what your eye is seeing. There's no magnification of any type or anything like that. So what's good about it is because of the simplicity of the system, there's really not a whole lot of moving parts there. It's a fairly rugged design inherently. Think about like the ACOG, for example. I'm sure my Marines are gonna get out there and be like, oh, I've broken an ACOG. I know you guys have, good job Marines. But prism optics are typically uh, rugged and reliable optics. And what's also good about them is as compared to like a red dot, um, red dots are excellent and in some ways eclipse prisms, but at the same time, what's good about a prism is that even if I run out of batteries, my prism continues to work because although the reticle will not be illuminated, the reticle is etched into the glass, which means uh, despite having no batteries or batteries dying or something like that, um, you can always see the reticle and can always make your shots. Compare that to a red dot where once your batteries die, that optic's out of the fight at that point. And so a lot of people who want a like ultimate fallout New Vegas, the entire world has failed and you haven't seen or heard the word battery in 20 years and want an optic that will still work, um, then a prism is certainly a good choice. And that's kind of where this particular optic comes into play because it tries to mimic a lot of the close combat capabilities of a red dot through a prism style optic being a one power prism. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But I will say that overall, I am actually very impressed with this optic, especially at the price point it's coming in at. So this particular optic costs around 
240-ish dollars. And price will probably fluctuate once it's fully released because I think they're going to, you know, do the full rollout around August on this particular optic. But for the price point, you're getting a lot of good stuff. But there's certainly some things I don't like about it, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first thing I want to point out that Prime Arms did well on this particular optic, in my opinion, is it looks good. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find a good looking optic and I know it's stupid but a lot of the higher end optics just look good and so it's always been disappointing to me when you just get this weird disgusting looking optic that's a prism optic from various companies or some of the older primary arms prism optics so I like the way it looks I think the form factor is pretty cool now here's a couple other notes about it so it is optic like what that means is that you're going to have eye relief and eye box issues compared to like a red dot because there is going to be an eye, lot, eye box and there is going to be eye relief simply due to the way that the optic works. So because of that, you might need to mount it in different locations. That's where it's going to come into play with your type of mounting system that you're working. So what I mean by that is this optic uses the mini ACOG style mounts, which are awesome because they're already out there. Um, they're you know supported by multiple companies. So that makes your... Um, you know, choosing a good mount or something like that, not that difficult. Now, there are different spacers on there. Now, this particular spacer is the absolute height spacer. Now, beyond that, you can also get different spacers that push the optic back, they can't deliver it. And that might be because you might have a weapon where it has to be mounted further forward and you have to get that optic a little bit back. The point is that there are options to mount this for anything. And to be clear, this optic is suitable for most of your weapons that you'll see. So anything from a 9mm carbine like this MPX all the way to your 223 5.56 rifles, 308, uh, 12 gauge shotguns, it will work on all of them. It is recoil rated for all of them. So it works fairly well on all that stuff. It just depends on the capability that you need from your optic. Now, the first thing to talk about when it comes to a prism style optic is the glass. How good is the glass? We'll go ahead and we'll pop up a little video right here. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to see through the video, but there is the most imperceptible loss of clarity, sharpness, and color compared to, say, a red dot, for example. A red dot's nice because it's a direct view optic. When I look through it, I'm seeing precisely what I'm seeing. Of course, there are other certain optics that have coatings that make it more difficult to see through them, but say on an EOTech or an Aimpoint T2 or a Comp M5, you're going to look through that and everything's going to look the same. The glass is quite clear and it has excellent optical light transmission. With the primary arms, you can definitely, there's definitely that sense that there's a little bit more glass between you and the target. And because of that, you do have that loss of clarity. So understand this is me nitpicking too, because it's not to the point where it's distracting while shooting or that it's bad, but I can certainly say that when I'm shooting this at longer distances, say three, 400, I definitely am starting to notice it, especially if the target is camouflage, certain seal targets that we paint color the ground, that way it's a little bit harder to pick it out. It can be a little bit harder to pick out those details. So understand that with this particular optic, and we can compare that to something like a, um, a Leupold Mark VI or a Night Force Attacker, where those have extremely like hyper-realistic, crisp, and colorful images. And the thing about those is that's great, but they're of course, you know, two, three thousand dollars $3,000. So being a $240 optic, I think that this does particularly well given its price point. So when we talk about how good the image looks, it's also important to talk about the reticle, and specifically the reticle illumination. So I think the illumination is something that they did very, very well on the micro prism. So there are three night vision settings. So under night vision, this optic actually looks pretty good. And you do have enough light transmission to shoot through it passively if that's something that you want to do. And if you're not sure what passively means, it means with the night vision worn on the head, I can look through that night vision, look through that dot and shoot with it on. So that definitely works. You're not going to get as good of transmission as you will through like the night vision king of shooting the EOTech or uh, an Aimpoint T2 or something like that, but it is fairly good. The night vision settings also work well. Now, beyond those night vision settings, we of course have our daylight bright settings. So on the illumination dial, um, it is good. It's fairly stiff. That way it's not going to get bumped out of position. And on the brightest setting, the question is always, is it daylight bright? And it certainly is. Actually, it's quite bright. Now, it is an aim point. I'm going to suck your soul into the optic bright, but it is good enough for the daylight situations you might find yourself. And we'll pop up a video right here. This is looking into some dead grass during 
you know, bright sunlight of a afternoon day out here in Washington. And you can see that you can still see the reticle fairly well. And it's kind of hard to show reticles through camera. So I hope it shows up well enough. And even better than that is the battery life that we're getting from it. So with this reticle, we're getting approximately 29,000 hours at the medium setting. Of course, you're probably going to get a lot less when you go to the you know extremely bright reticle settings. But the point being is beyond that, they also have an auto shutoff feature. What this means is when the optic does not detect any type of motion, it turns itself off. And when it detects motion, it will turn itself back on. I think this is one of the greatest features and many optics are starting to incorporate this. And I'm very happy that they incorporated that feature into the micro prism. I think it's forward thinking and I think it's frankly going to be the future of optics technology because again, the slightest of movements will turn those optics back on. So it, there, in my mind, there's really no reason not to have that technology, especially given how proven it is at this time and how well it works. So in the middle of the night, you can have this optic on and ready to go. It's going to shut off because it doesn't detect motion. And then when your mom gets up upstairs to get something from the fridge and you go around to clear your basement because you hear a noise, that optic's going to turn right on for you for all your LARPing needs. So the illumination is excellent on the micro prism. So when it comes to illumination, it's going to illuminate a reticle. And the question is, which reticle is best? And I think when it comes to reticle designs, at the ACSS and other designs that spawn from it are perhaps the best. I want this reticle in every optic out there, not like SIG where they stole it, but rather made directly by primary arms and giving a little bit credit to the people who designed them. But the ACSS on the micro prism is frankly, it's really good. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop up a little picture of the ACSS reticle right now that's on the micro prism. So essentially you have this horseshoe of death and then in the center you have that nice chevron. So for your precise shooting at the tip of the chevron, you have your pretty much point of impact depending on your zero. Now on the primary arms website, they have different zeros all the way from 556 to 308 to different types of calibers. So you can see where your impacts are going to land. So essentially how I use it is I use the horseshoe of death from about 25 meters and in with any rifle because it pretty much gives me a good CQB reticle. And then of course, beyond there, I begin to use a Chevron for more precise hits. Now, the best part about this reticle, in my opinion, is it comes with a ranging reticle on it. Um, I love that they do this. So the ranging reticle is based off height um, of an individual who's approximately five foot 10, of course. So there are manlets out there. So if you encounter a manlet, make sure that you kind of adjust that a little bit, but that gives you a rough dope. Now, What's your ability to make that shot with this reticle? Well, certainly it's going to be a little bit more difficult because the Chevron is small on this reticle because we are at one power. But nonetheless, it does give you the option to range it either if you have a buddy who has a long gun just for a quick dope for him or something like that. I just think it's a good feature and why not? It doesn't clutter up at all. Again, it is forward thinking and I really love the ACSS reticles. Enough of me simping for primary arms though. Another thing that I like about the reticle is that with the horseshoe design, what's really cool about it is that horseshoe also corresponds to roughly the pattern size you'll see from 12 gauge double aught bucket, 25 yards. For you shotgunners out there, that is very, very useful. So beyond that, we also have to talk about the adjustments. What is it like zeroing this gun? So it is good. The clicks feel positive as you push the zero up, down, left, right. My problem comes in with the, the size of the adjustment. Each click is one MOA, which in my opinion is too much. So I talked to Dimitri about this, um, who works at primary arms and he stated that they would be coming out with a version that would have half MOA clicks, which I think makes a lot more sense. I think the MOA clicks right now that we have on this reticle are too large for good, precise hits. And people are like, well, it's close enough. Sure. But if I can get more accurate and more precise with my zero, that's important to me. And I think it should just, it should have been half MOA right off the bat. So that is, I think, the most puzzling part of this optic. And I understand that a price point has to be met. I just wish that I was half MOA. Nonetheless, I was still making shots up to 300 at this particular optic. So it's certainly doable as long as you're doing your part. Um, it's just me pointing out the, the part of the optic that I think makes this um, puzzling. I just wish they would have done something a little bit better there. Now, as far as holding zero, that comes in, that's a harder thing to, to say, right? because the ability of an optic to hold zero comes as much from the 
optic itself as it does to the mounts. So the mounts that we're using are the mounts that came with it from Primary Arms. Um, I will say it's been very sturdy. Now, I don't do the Sage Dynamics drop testing. That's not kind of my testing protocol. Mine is more a, I'm bumping into barricades, it's swinging on my, on my sling as I'm running and it's hitting rocks and as I go prone, how does it do? And that's kind of the way I handle my optics for the most part. And you know, throughout all that, it never lost zero. So I do find it to be a reliable and sturdy design. Now, speaking of losing things, we're gonna talk about our sponsor right now. We have Keeps. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps is pretty cool. So the fact remains that by the age of 35, gentlemen, two out of three of you are gonna start experiencing hair loss. NBD, you can choose to lose your hair, you can choose to keep your hair. Now, if you choose to keep it, what's cool about Keeps is that you can get treated from the comfort of your home. You can go ahead, go to the website. You'll have a licensed physician who will evaluate you and who will recommend different types of medications that are gonna work or not work for you. And then from there, you can find the treatment plan that works for you and you can go ahead and push forward with it. So what's cool also is with Keeps, it's pretty cheap since you are using generics of those well-known drugs. So again, the thing about it is it does take about four to six months to work. Now, a couple of my military buddies have used it and they've used it with pretty uh, good results. So you have about four to six months before it starts working. Then after that, um, you're gonna have to continue to take it. So realize, is it for you? Maybe it's not for everybody, but if it's something that you're interested in, go ahead and check it out. The sooner, the better. Check it out at keeps.com forward slash grand thumb. <laughs> Again, guys, go check it out. Big thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. All right, back to it. So <laughs> um, beyond that, of course, being that this is a optic, um, such as a prism, it does require a diopter. So everybody's eyes are a little bit different and the diopter allows you to adjust it. That is good. Make sure that you adjust that diopter, otherwise you're not gonna get the best picture through that optic that you possibly can. So make sure you're doing that. Um, I find it to be quite stiff to move, which is good. I don't want it moving as I'm, you know, trapezing through the woods or something like that. And it has been quite excellent. Now, with that being said, we get into one of the best parts about this optic, which is the eye relief. So the question is how far or how close going to be through the optic and still see through it? Good questions. Let's test it out right now. So all the way from all the way up to the optic, I can easily see through it. All the way back, 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 back. Uh, about right here is where it gets a little bit weird. That was odd. Um, the point is, it has an enormous eye box. Now, it typically says around three -ish inches for your eye relief. I find it to be much more. It's a very forgiving eye box now. You do start to induce a little bit of error the further you get off from the center of the reticle, but it does pretty well. Now, as far as being on the eye box, so how far do I have to be off axis before I lose the sight picture or the reticle? About right. I can be pretty far off of it. It's a very forgiving optic, especially for a prism. You never know what to expect when looking through a 1X. And when it comes to this prism, it is just very forgiving. I love it quite a bit. Now, is it as good as a red dot? No, of course not. A red dot is superior when it comes to ability to look through the optic and easily find the dot, just because you can see it in so many different positions. But the primary arms micro prism, I think it gets pretty damn close. I'm very impressed with what they have done with this particular optic. And so as far as shooting it, um, it's awesome. Um, you're not getting any type of scope shadow or anything like that due to how generous the eye box is. I find follow-up shots to be quite easy with this particular optic and I love it. It's durable, it's rugged, it's reliable. And it's an optic that, you know, if everything just goes bad or if I run out of batteries or if that's a concern, it's going to continue to work. So I can appreciate the thought, the design work that went into this particular optic. Now I'm a little disappointed with the glass quality and with the adjustments specifically, but beyond this, I find this to be an excellent optic and I would certainly recommend it. So what does it come down to? Is this a combat? Is this a optic that you can depend on with your life? That's harder to say. I have about a thousand rounds on it so far. And quite frankly, it just needs more time. Uh, unfortunately, due to MO limitations that I have right now, um, this is going to be a review that's going to have to be revisited in several years as I get more time on it. And I think that's the most difficult thing about reviewing a brand new product is that mine is a sample size of two. I only have two of these optics I've been able to test and I'll just need more time on them. We'll need to see reports from more people. But based on what I've seen, I think that this is a very 
very promising optic. And if you get the chance to get your hands on it, I would highly recommend it. So what does it come down to? Well, this optic definitely rocks, but if you don't rock, the optic is not going to rock. So make sure that you invest into yourself as well, because these are tools, you are the weapon. Make sure that you train yourself as a weapon. Tons of great guys to get training from. Pat McNamara, Haley Strategic, probably my dad, Cog Works, Bear Solutions. Check them out. Can't recommend them enough. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, make sure you drink water. Drinking water will change your life in many ways. Make sure you are staying hydrated. It really, really matters. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to my Patreon people. You guys are incredible and you make this channel wonderful. Love you guys. Got nothing else for you for now.